Thank you. Just make yourself comfortable. Tell somebody to say you're welcome to church. Good. The blessings of God never depart from anybody. God yesterday, God today, God forever. Do you see yourself dancing today, praising God? Tell somebody to say, I have reason to praise God. Can you look at the problem at home? The situations, the challenges at home. Say, I have reason to praise God. Celebrate Jesus in body. I have reason to praise God. What kind of reason do you think I have? I have reason because I'm alive. Then I have reason because I can get up from this bed. Viewers in police custody, in prison yard. And hospital, you have reason to praise God. King David, in his wisdom, he said, The dead cannot praise God. It's only the living can praise God. Are you getting it? So, somebody have reason. Say, Beloved, I have reason to praise God. Celebrate Jesus, somebody. So, my reason to praise God goes like this. My reason that some of you here, you are an orphan. You have no parents. You have no guidance. But how are you living? What is going on in your life? Somebody like me, I know how I grew. I grew without them, parents. I grew without education. I grew without food. Then who was taking care of me? He that created me in his own image, whom I cannot see, but he knows my whereabouts. Parents never look for me, but he always be with me. According to his word in the book of Numbers, pardon, in the book of Psalms 91, he said, my angels will take charge over me. His angel will take charge of him at life. And so many things that you are doing, you don't know what is happening. Sometimes you fall in a good luck. You say, I'm a lucky one today. And you laugh. Sometimes you find, your, you find yourself in a wrong position. You say, why did I enter in this wrong way? Before you know it, you get out from me. Who was leading you? Mighty God. Somebody say, I'm a choosing. Say, I'm a, I'm a choosing. If you say, I'm, a, I'm not choosing. So many people, when I began this ministration at the early stage of my life, when I was seven, when I was eight, when I was nine, when I was ten, many people that mocked me then, many of them that speak against me, the same set of people, so many of them have passed and died, and some of them that are alive, some of them are coming to eat from me. So many of them believe that with me they can live. That this is the reason of God. And sometimes when I look at myself, take this word, looking at yourself, sometimes nobody makes you happy. Nothing makes you happy. And I'm trying to see who can make me happy. But in the other way around, you are making so many people happy. So if somebody is not making you happy and you're making somebody happy, happiness is still around you. <laughs> Glory be to God. Are you see how it's happening? Happiness is still around me because I'm making some people happy. And people are trying to make me angry, but I'm making people happy. That does not mean that happiness has not, that does not mean that happiness has been taken away from me. Okay, 
Why God is doing all these things for you? Sometimes you find thyself nearly motor accident. Sometimes nearly you would have fallen in the wrong hand of armed robbers. Some of you are mothers, the days of pregnancy, the contraction, the computer, the medical director has given dates and say, God is holding the child. But on the day, you never think of God. So many danger we have fallen in. And we get up from that danger. What is going on? Not that we are too prayerful. Then you know that I have taught you this. I have taught time to time. That when you pray more. Because you are desperate of something. And you are praying, 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 praying more. Prayer. So much prayer. As you are praying so much prayer. Expecting an answer to your prayer. What you will be seeing is attack. You are praying for promotion in a company when you, after prayer you go to bed and sleep, you'll be seeing yourself in primary school. <laughs> Are you getting it? You keep on praying for spiritual attack, any devil, any demon in my house, in this vicinity. After praying, you say you have destroyed them, you give them fire, when you go to bed, you still have an attack. Sometimes you pray earnestly or prayer of holiness this season i want to have something in common with god this season i want to be holy i want to be holy god fill me with the holy spirit when you are weak you go to bed you see yourself having something in common with somebody you don't know or somebody you know like form but you're talking about holiness then we ask question what is going on for you to see the answer of your prayer you are seeing another thing then many times you don't pray, things is working, things start working for you. Is it true? So many times you do not pray and you see things working on its own. Then can we stop praying? No. We continue praying. Can we stop going to church? No. We continue going to church, going to places of worship according to your faith. So, what am I telling you? God directs our lives in his own time. Say with me, God directs our life in his own time. Yeah. He directs our lives in his own time. The way you want it to be, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is not going to be like that. There are so many things I want. There's places I want to be. There's the kind of life I want to live. There's the kind of people I want to be in their midst to minister. There's the kind of strategies I have. But he directs my lies. He keeps me where he wants me to be. Sometimes my exposition has kindled my mentality. That my mentality is growing and lightening. That my vision and my taste is of quality. But when I expect that quality, what I see in is the people that I can manage. Not the quality and the standard of the people. But the people I will manage. I'll pamper. I'll clean up their noses. I'll clean up their eyes. I'll say you don't dress well. But this is not what I want. So God directs and life the way he wants. If you're a minister of God, listen to me. You follow your call. Follow what God has called you to do. Not in the other way around. If you're trying to do it in the other way around, you know you do business. That is what me want. Class. I want. Working with classes. 
You speak to people with eye above. Not be pale. You are directing here. You are going here. You are telling them sit down. They are standing up. You are asking them to stand up. They are sitting down. This is how it's happening in our lives. In marriage, you see these things. In relationships, you see these things. In business, you see all these things. So, but I'm trying to let people of God to know that God directs our life the way to obey so that we can be his messenger. His messenger. That we can represent him to make the commoner to become somebody. If you are a tutor here, if you are a teacher, a lecturer, the highest class, listen to me, the highest class to teach or to lecture, the most strong class that you will enter and know you have done work from the university level to the kindergarten, nursery schools, primary school, secondary school, university, and some of them that do masters and PhD. The highest class you will enter and know you have done work is the kindergarten class. Isn't it? Why? They are put. You clean them. You pamper them. You pet them. Then you teach them. They prove stubborn. They don't want to learn. You pet them to learn. But this is the same teacher that teaching in kindergarten class has the vision to be a lecturer in a popular university or institution. But because of condition, you find by serving a kindergarten class. And you ask so many questions, why am I in kindergarten class? The answer is this. God has sent you in kindergarten class as his minister for you to start there. Then you have been in kindergarten class for one and two, three years. You say God's time is the best. But you have been in kindergarten class for two decades, for three decades, 30 years, 30 something years. And you are still in kindergarten class. And you are aging, you ask yourself, when shall I get up and see much with my vision and test? He directs our life. Sometimes you will end up your vision in kindergarten class in order to please him. But you know where you belong. The way you talk, the response of the people. When you look at their faces in the front chair like this, it gives you joy. It motivated you to speak more. But sometimes your expectation is not what you are seeing in your business. After have purchased, you have purchased a nice product, a nice material, very colorful. And you have positioned them and sampled them. What you are expecting people to rush beg you. But instead of them to rush and beg you, you see yourself calling customers. So many things, the intellectual, the blessings you have, the knowledge, the wisdom you have, you think that when you speak, people understand what you are saying. But it's not working like that because of what? God has created you. God has made you as a divine person. A different entity. That's why you find thyself in some certain places that was not or that is not your dream. But that does not mean you give up to your faith. Keep on following it up and keep on doing that work to make the profession of life. I know I'm talking to weak, wise people here, not everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I'm taking to the book. I'm taking to the book of. Um, Exodus chapter 19 from verse 5 to 7. That's three chapter verses. Hallelujah. The book of Exodus. From verse 5, now, we read together. 
Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the ways which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Verse 7. And Moses came and called the elders of the people and led before their face all these were which the Lord commanded him. I stop here. But I can continue. And all the people answered together and said, All oh, that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned to the ways to the people unto the Lord. That's verse 8. I stop here. Thank you. Okay. This prophecy. Okay. Are you there? Moses received a message. After he had brought the people of Israel from the land of Egypt. Then he received message from God and he spoke to them the one I'm talking to you. He said, the Lord said to you, if you will be, God is talking to you in your own local life. That business do, the marriage you are managing, there's so many man marriage you are managing, manage it. God is talking to you right now. Okay? Hello? Am I talking to somebody here? Your children, you are managing. The environment where you are living, you are not supposed to live, you are managing it. The business you are managing, God is talking to you. He said, I should let you know, as a peculiar treasure. He said, if you will obey my advice and keep my covenant. What is covenant? Agreement. Okay. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all nations, for all the earth is mine. He so said, you'll be a special person. Remember, a special person God called you, and a special person is serving in kindergarten class. A special person God called me, and a special person is going out with somebody that you are hiding in class. But God said, manage her. God said, manage him. I called you dear to be a special person to that person. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. Mm, you may not understand. Uh, viewers, I know you're following me up. Now, he said, yeah, you, watch here, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. When you're talking about priests and a holy nation, and these way which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, the believers. A kingdom of priests. When you hear about being priesthood, you think is the highest authority. A priest is not a president. Huh? Hello? A priest is not a governor. A priest is not a prime minister. A priest is not a senator. A priest is not a senate president. A priest is a servant. Watch me. God say, I'm choosing you to be the priest. So a priest, this is my work. So when you hear this word, being a priest, I need a child of seven, six years. Please come up. Seven, six years, come up. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, come up. I need you, madam. Come and uh, son, I need you. Come, I need a child. Two, three years. Come up. I need, please help me. Help me, please. Come, come to the altar. A priest is a servant. Boy, come. You come, come, come. I like you. Come, big boy. This is a priest. Come closer to me. Sit, sit down. Sit down, son. Feel free. Come, children, beautiful people. Oh, my princess. You're welcome. Okay, let me tell you why you say you're a choosing peculiar treasure. This is your work.
a priest is called to serve this woman. This woman will come and talk about her business. And you need to attend to her. And trying to convince her there is hope for tomorrow. Then she will not go. Look at her. She's my class. Because she's big. That the same priest will attend to this young man. Maybe a politician. You speak to him in his political challenges. Advising what to do. And you pray for him. Giving him hope. And he'll be satisfied and go. That's the work of a priest. Okay. A priest has to attend to princes. Watch the height, the age, and her age. So you attend to this person. Remember Jesus Christ said, my work as a prophet is not for adults, but for children. Allow them to come close to the church. <laughs> a priest, attend to the princess. You pet her, give her hope, then she will go. Thank you, daughter. Men looking at this one. <laughs> What's the name? Huh? Jerry. Huh? Jerry. Jerry. Then a priest will also come close to Jerry. And know the problem of Jerry. Sometimes you pray with Jerry. And advise her, pet Jerry. And give Jerry hope for tomorrow. Then Jerry, you can go. The same priest will sit down with this puppy and know the problem of this young man. You talk to him in a language, in a calm voice to know what is his problem that he cannot expose to his own parents but he would like to talk to you. This is the work of the priest. Thank you, my son. What is your name? Kinsley. Casey. God bless you, my son. I go. Celebrate Casey, people. A president has nothing to do with this case. A governor has nothing to do with this case. A high businessman has nothing to do with this case. But your work as a messenger, a chosen, you are born to attend to everybody. It's a hard job. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me? So if you see yourself as a chosen in the family, a wife, a chosen, husband, a chosen, you will serve husband and serve children. You will serve in the church. You will serve every damn person. I have to be in the office. A young children come to me and say, there's something I want to tell you, daddy. Some of them call me big daddy. Some of them call me grandpa. I don't want my parents to know about this. The person will open up his own secret, her own secret, a little child. You must listen to him. No government can listen to children. No politicians can listen to children. But you being the priest, you listen to them. To the extent you listen to a pregnant woman and also listen to the child inside the womb. It's my work. If you call yourself a chosen, it's not about hanging shoulder. This is a work of affiliation. Nobody can listen to widows. The politicians can use widows for their political game. But if you being a priest, you monitor them and watch over them. God said that he is the husband of the widows. 
You don't see God. The husband they see is the man of God in the church. The day the church was broke down, come, produce him. The day the church was broke down, 2015. 7th December, the same time they were breaking down the church, my phone rang and was crying. Lo and behold, it was him that was calling me. He was in problem in the market square and was telling me that somebody is looking for his problem. I wiped my tears while answering the call and I gave him a listening ear and he told me, I began to cancel him and cancel him. He said, thank you, sir. I never told him that his church was broken down at the same point and he was satisfied. So I, I say that's why I love you he cut off the phone and I cut off the phone I continue crying that is my job a priest is a man that will come to the house of God and you find out that the youths that the men youths the female youths the fathers the mothers couldn't meet up to come and clean the house of God it is your duty to pull off your clothes and start cleaning it because when God come and ask question, why didn't you clean the house of God? He will never ask the mothers. He will never ask the fathers. He will never ask the children. He will never ask the young ladies. He will ask you whom you claim as the chosen. You have responsibility wherever you are. So what you claim you are, trying to do the work, then the perfection will be announced in heaven. I don't know what I'm telling somebody here. So when you claim, I'm a chosen. Some of you have been chosen to be a backbone to the priests. And your conscience is telling him he needs your help. And another conscience is telling him, he has money, he's above it. And he failed to do your work. Your own work will come. Heaven will fail to do his own work. Because theologically, they, they said that iron sharpened one iron. The church need this. The church need that. You have it. But you are looking at them. And the priest cannot sleep. You will be a peculiar treasure unto me the whole earth is mine but i will use you as my servant as my slave we will do the work of god sometimes we come to house of god why doing the work the clothes we tear the shoe we wear everything we can't stop because you continue doing it to make sure that they are going with a smiling on face. To make sure that all their bad emotion has been suppressed with the gospel. If it cannot be suppressed with the gospel, pick up the microphone and start singing. Watch them. If they cannot dance, drop the microphone and start joking with them. In the process of joking, their high bad emotion will disappear. You win the soul of the day. Every day win souls for God. Your own soul. This is our work. Don't allow somebody to remind you that it is your time to clean the environment as somebody living in a public house. This morning when I was coming, I looked at my two cars I want to use for church. There was a little raining last night. The cars was washed, they were washed last night. I said, I can't drive with this. Give me a towel. And before my security quit, supposed to be washing the car. So he said, I said no, don't worry, don't worry, let me do it. I can do it. I'm a minister. I'm a servant. You can do it because I'm paying you. But nobody is paying me. I can do it because I want to look neat in my car. We are not above any obligation. We are not above any work. We are not above any assignment. Sometimes I call the people around me, say you are both staying with choir, you are bigger than staying with these ones. I'm the one that for me. I'm not above it, I monitor it. When they get wrong, I say you got it wrong. 
when they do it well, I clap for them. I'll clap for them, I control them. Continue doing the work. God loves somebody. A child of God, King David was a politician. But before he became a politician, he had that calling, he had that common thing with God. Even though he was the king, the king of that time happened to be the president of a nation today. He's still serving as an usher in the house of God. He was still serving as a musical director in the house of God. He never dropped his instruments. He never stopped playing. He never stopped doing the ushering work. But after the work, he will go back to his palace as a political leader. Then he is saying in his word, no matter whatever I am, a day in the house of God is better than a thousand years in my palace. You can be this, you can be that outside here. But if you have something in common with God, whenever you come around, it makes you joy. It gives you joy. But when you go out there, you become that you are. This is how God wants us to live life. He said, all nations are mine, but I'm interested in you to serve. I come, I look around, I watch, it's my work. The other day, I went to my family, my family house in the village. Young boys that are doing well are living there. Young ladies are doing well and living there. But I look at my gates, the, my father's gates. I said, this gate is not lapping, it's not closing. Get somebody that will face it. I'm not living there. Because I look at that particular place that was started. After that, I made a call. I bribed my younger brother. I said, clean that place. I made sure that place looks clean. And then whenever I come around and find out that that place looks clean, you take it from me. I will always make you happy. I'm not living there. I don't have a single room there. But God has called me as his minister from that family to monitor it. This is our right. Do not allow somebody to do your work. Do not allow people to remind you your work. Let us see who will first beg each other, wife and husband. Over right has separated our relationship and marriage. Take it upon yourself, peg. Take it upon yourself, greet. Call petty names. As you come just to please him. So many men like petty names. Somebody like me, I don't like petty names. But so many like petty names. If you find out he like petty names, always call him a petty name. Likewise, your wife. This is your calling. You know it is stopping you, but you are you, you want the first person that we did is not me. Where are we heading to, both of us? You and I, our journey will end in grace. The crisis everywhere. The trouble, the fight everywhere. In environment, noises. But as I said the other day, the most quiet place on earth is cemetery. When you go to cemetery, burial ground, nobody make noise. Nobody drag land with anybody. Nobody drag customer with anybody. Nobody fight. No debtor is in the graveyard. Everywhere remain quiet. And quietness is what God needs from us. Another quiet place you can talk of in this world happened to be the mortuary. And these two places, you and I are heading to that place, whether you like it or not. So let's start preparing ourselves. 
and our main life live in peace because the dead are living in peace so when you go to graveside you don't know who is rich and who is poor when you go to graveside the politicians don't make noise there a layman never make noise there whether you are the chief of their community you have chief tense title the law law in africa here meaning of the princess the queen nobody can talk about that everywhere is quiet in makuto is quiet meaning in heaven jesus said makuto vo let the kingdom come let it be done on earth as it is in makuto in heaven let the quietness in the heaven in heaven take place in your life live in peace with wife live in peace with husband live in peace with children live in peace with people some people are born to be a troublemaker avoid them you don't avoid them by talking good morning good morning avoid them a wise man says silence is best answer for some certain people people may you rise you are not celebrating. Are you, you are not celebrating. <laughs> Glory be to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Quietness. Peace. Gives you a soul joy. Because you are a choosing. King Solomon said if you are buoyant. Make your heart merry men. If you have opportunity to drink, drink the wine of your choice. If you have opportunity to have a good time with your family and friends, you are free. But when the social gathering turn and become war, Jesus Christ said, flee. Run for your dear life. You don't come into this world for fight. So many people like fighting you. But so many people like you. Avoid the people that are fighting you. Don't fight back. Don't stress yourself. Don't hurt your flesh. God loves you. You are a chosen. Live a peaceful life. Live a peaceful life. Live a peaceful life. Jesus, you are Live a peaceful life. You are a choosing. Forget about how he or she is eyeing you. Don't take the attention of your eyeball to him or to her. Keep it straight. We sing together. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, so give Jesus, you are the only one. And do not allow people to force you to talk. Don't give them that privilege, forcing you to grow in anger. Remember my teaching last Sunday. That anger push out thy soul. And when your soul is gone out from your body, it is too risk for your body to live without a soul. Don't give them that chance. Jesus. 
Jesus you are I'm more good I'm more good for Bolo to web mamba mo gora wo jesus yo ale heavenly father i beg thee guide our soul guide our mind guide us in all things we do you have chosen us to be your servants home and abroad bless the souls of all listeners bless the souls of all viewers and bless the souls of all your people in presence bless them for me oh god and pick them as a divine peculiars may they do your work and return good news to you may father bless you in all the challenges of life may he empower you for a way out in the name of jesus christ thank you lord somebody give it to jesus celebrate celebrate jesus